Greetings and welcome back to the Home Slice. I'm here in a grove of woolly nightshade and gorse. These are two super invasive plants that tend to take over the countryside and crowd out native trees here in New Zealand. So I'm working on a project to clear this area so that the native plants can continue to grow back. If any of you caught my last episode on hatchet penetration, we're gonna continue that today. So we have got the Fiskars, or Fiskars, I never know what to call it, I kind of call it both, X21, which is actually a splitting ax, to be fair. So if it doesn't do well with penetration, we certainly can't blame Fiskars. Now keep in mind, I'm not splitting wood. So if you want a hatchet for splitting wood, you're going to desire different characteristics. And at that point, the widening of the blade may actually be an appealing characteristic to you rather than a drawback. But it has some interesting qualities. It's the thinnest splitting axe that I could find at my local hardware store. It has a hollow grind here. So I'm hoping that that kind of aids in penetration until it gets up to this shoulder area. And it has a huge long handle. Like I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this. The Fiskars X21 is gonna be going up against the Husqvarna Carpenter's Axe. Yes, I know that neither of these are axes designed for felling trees. This is just the axe that I happened to like and purchase. I like the straight edge. I like the accuracy of the mid-length handle. This is my personal axe, and I really love it. I've enjoyed the edge retention that Husqvarna is getting for chopping, and I've reprofiled this edge so that it's a tiny bit narrower angle, more acute angle than factory, but I have not done any reprofiling work. So these are both to factory spec, just with the edges resharpened. The sharpening that I've done on both of these is identical to what was done on the hatchets. So I've taken the original edge off in any damaged metal with diamond, gone up to fine diamond, and then honed it on Spyderco Ultra Fine Abrasive, and then used Spyderco Ceramic Rods, edge leading to take the burr off, and then stropped it on kangaroo leather, first with chromium oxide, and then unloaded. That's what I've done for all these. It's kind of a fairly quick and easy method to get these edges pretty nice and zippy and minimize damage. I didn't want to stress about getting it to like 50 grams on a best tester or something like that or have it splitting cigarette paper. I just wanted to do a realistic edge that a normal person could achieve on a normal day and see which of these tools in their natural state performs better in terms of penetrating deeply for a cutting task. Things to note is I'm not going to do any splitting today. I recognize splitting is a big job of big axes and this one is actually made for it. Other things to note today is that we're not fighting fair like this Fiskars is way longer handle than the Husqvarna. I'm not expecting them to return similar numbers. I'm also not expecting them to return the same kinds of penetration numbers as the hatchets. Rather today, what we're going to hopefully find out is when you add weight to an ax and when you add handle length, how much cutting penetration do you actually add? If you go twice as long or a 100% increase in handle length and a 100% increase in weight. I don't know if this is, I'll tell you at the end of the video after I measure them. Will it result in sinking 100% deeper? Right now I'm on steep hillsides. Sometimes they're very difficult places to get to, so I often use axes to clear these things. And for me, the question of efficiency is really important. So just like the hatchets, I'm gonna test 10 trees with these. I'll do at least one test where I do a double stroke in the same spot and see how deep the additional stroke went. We'll average out the numbers and then I will give some closing thoughts and observations. I expect that this is going to, this Fiskars is gonna sink deeper than this Husqvarna. I'm very interested to find out by how much. They sharpened very similarly. If you missed the last episode, the method for testing is I'm gonna come in at the same angle on tr the same trees with the same diameter because if you increase in diameter, there's like pressure from the sides and everything keeping it from penetration. So I don't wanna sink one ax in one tree and another ax in a much thicker tree where it wouldn't sink as deep because there's more resistance. So one stroke each on the same tree, mark it with a pencil, and then I've got a measuring tape here 
and I'll measure in millimeters how deep it sunk. We'll average all of those out. I'll try to hit similar size of trees that I did with the hatchets and we'll see what we find out. Well, it seems pretty clear the measurements were slightly better on almost all, all but two of the strokes with the Fiskers. I think I'm just going to clear some of these and I'll speed up the footage because it's kind of fun to watch. And then I'll have to enter all the data I just measured into a spreadsheet and I'll give you guys a summary of my thoughts on the matter. All right guys, this is the data we gathered from this test. Over on the left side, you can see the data from the original test with the hatchets. And then on the right side, we've got the big axes. The one through 10 marks are the different strokes that I measured and the 10 of the hatchets as well as the big axes is the one where I did two strokes to see if it would penetrate deeper on something that's already pierced. The blue lines to begin with are percentages based on the Fiskars X7, their 12 inch hatchet to see how much better or worse the axe did to that. And then we have length and weight over all of the axe. 
and I'll explain the ones at the bottom when we get there. So right away we see a big increase with the big axis, 53 millimeters average on the Husqvarna and 60.5 millimeters on the Fiskars X21. Um, that's 58% and 80% better than the small hatchet. So a big increase in efficiency, definitely worth upgrading to a bigger tool if you're doing work that you don't have to pack the tool for a long way. If you exclude the data from the double chop and you just count the single chops, then the Husqvarna basically is the same amount better than the Fiskars X7 as it was initially 58% to 59% and the X21 loses a little bit of its edge over the X7 if you don't count the double chop data. The Fiskars X21 bit very deep to 100 millimeters on that second chop. So very good uh, for chop repetition and biting super deeply on that one, I think due to the hollow grind. If we look at the length in inches, the Husqvarna is 53% longer. So it actually achieves a greater amount of increased efficiency of penetration than it is an increase in overall tool length that you have to pack, which means I think that it's a pretty well-balanced design. The Fiskars X21 is a little bit of a different story. It's 115% longer, but it only bites about 80% deeper. It's a sizable difference in both cases, but you do gain more length than you gain chopping effectiveness, which is interesting. Both axes, however, are a huge increase in weight at 126% and 172% of the weight of the hatchet, respectively. Now, this really plays out when you get down to these bottom measurements. The first one is how many millimeters it bites in per inch. And you can see that the Husqvarna is just a hair better than that Fiskars X7, as we mentioned, in terms of efficiency. But you can see a downward trend overall, meaning that strict chopping effectiveness versus how long the tool actually is, is actually optimized at smaller sizes. Like if you are going to pack something a long way it needs to fit in a pack, efficiency wise, you're actually better off with a smaller tool in some ways. The last reading is how many grams you have to pack per millimeter of penetration. So the first reading is better if it's higher. This one's better if it's lower. You wanna pack less grams per millimeter of penetration. And you can see that both of these, the efficiency actually suffers in these larger axes, which is to say adding more weight doesn't actually add an equal amount of effectiveness. Now, what does this mean? I mean, if you're working close to home, it doesn't really matter that much how long it is or how heavy it is. And so you definitely wanna just go for maximum effectiveness of a tool for the job that you're doing. But it's interesting from a design standpoint to realize that things that must be packed for a long distance or need to be somewhat portable, the balance of efficiency tends toward being most optimal in my experience in testing so far in that sort of like nine to 12 inch tool range, which is really interesting. That's all the observations I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you wanna see the one that was on hatchet penetration where I did the same thing with smaller tools, I'll put the link on screen now. For the rest of you, I'll say peace out from the home slice. Hope you have a great day, bye.